is how can we understand, how can we use chemistry to understand the world around us? So by the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the difference between acids and bases, explaining the key characteristics of each. So today we're going to observe a chemical reaction to experience acids. Then we're going to do a virtual lab to explore acids and bases. We'll explain our observations as a class, and extend our exploration by studying how to reduce the effects of acid rain. Then we'll take a short quiz to evaluate what we've learned. Go on ahead and answer the question that's on your screen. What is acid and what do you already know? And I'll give y'all one more minute to finish this up.
to this cord over it. I want y'all to think about what you think will happen to the sponge. So let's think about that for a second. Now I want you to talk to one of your table partners and share out what do you think will happen to the sponge? straight through the sponge. The sponge melted because the acid is toxic to plastic and pretty much anything else. It dissolved the way it melted. The sponge got burned. The sponge burned and dissolved the sponge in seconds. The sponge dissolved. The sponge started to dissolve and I think it burned because of how hot acid is. All right, I'm going to give y'all one more minute to go ahead and answer this. Guesses. 
Pay attention to what happens if water is added to an acid or a base. So this is what it's gonna look like, okay? So what you can do is, this is like a little cup when this drop down thing is pulled up. It's like a cup. And you can pour whatever one of these substances you want into the cup and you drag this green thing over to the cup and it'll read the pH. Okay, so here's a reminder of the pHs. Acidic is under seven, basic is over seven. All right? So we wanna get over seven. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. They, there are different pHs for different liquids. So what I want y'all to do, go on ahead and guess which liquids you think are acidic and circle it. Circle the ones that you think are acidic. This is just guessing. I tried. There's no right or wrong. It's just guessing because we're going to test it out.
like two more minutes. Let's explain what we observe. Go on ahead and type in. What did you observe during the simulation? that these liquids in which I thought would be more basic were acidic. Yeah. And vice versa, right? I observed that when you add water to whatever substance you observed, it becomes more neutral. Good. That is correct. Acid and how it can burn through stuff. Okay. When you add water to it, it goes up. There were more acidic than basic. All right, and 30 more seconds to get your thoughts in. All right. So go on ahead and circle any of those that surprised you. <clears throat> and then submit. when water is added to an acid or a base. Think about that. It becomes more neutral. Let's move on. So on 
tonight, we're going to watch a video about acids and bases. After watching, we'll answer a few questions with your partner about what you've learned. And I want y'all to pay uh, special attention to when they talk about protons, right? So protons are positively charged and they're located in the? Nucleus. The nucleus, good. They're gonna talk about protons and electrons actually. Acids and bases are everywhere. They're used to make foods, Soaps and detergents, fertilizers, explosives, dyes, plastics, pesticides, even paper. Our stomachs are very acidic. Our blood is slightly basic. Our proteins are made up of amino acids. And the letters in our genetic code, those A's, T's, C's, and G's, are all bases. You were probably taught how acids and bases behave on the molecular level. You were probably never taught that a long time ago, like ancient Greek ago, before anyone knew about atoms or molecules, acids and bases were defined by how they behaved. Acids tasted sour and corroded metal. Bases felt slippery and could somehow counteract acids. When molecules dissolve in water interact, they're exchanging two main currencies with their surroundings. Protons, also known as hydrogen ions, and electrons. Depending on how a molecule is composed or shaped, it may be willing to donate or accept either protons or electrons with some other community member. And some molecules are far more aggressive than others when it comes to donating or accepting either currency. Remember that protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. So if a molecule is willing to give up a proton, that's not too different from it being willing to accept an electron. Either way, it's becoming more negatively charged. Other molecules are willing to accept a proton or give up an electron. These are becoming more positively charged. Some substances are so aggressive about donating their protons that when they get a chance, all of the molecules in a sample will dump a proton, sometimes more than one, to the surrounding water molecules. We call these strong acids. Meanwhile, some compounds are so ready to accept a proton that they won't wait around. They'll just rip one off water, which usually has two protons, but is generous enough to hang out with just one. We call these strong bases. Other acids and bases are not so strong. They may donate just a few of their protons to water, or accept just a few protons from water, but most of their molecules stay exactly the same. If left alone in water, they'll reach some equilibrium point, where maybe only one out of a hundred, or one out of ten thousand of their molecules, has exchanged currency with water. As you might guess, we label these acids and bases weak. But in the common sense of the word, they're not weak. The vinegar in your salad dressing that you can smell from across the room, that is a weak acid. The ammonia you spray on glass for a streak-free shine, that is a weak base. So it doesn't take much to be an active player in the chemical economy. Most acid-base chemistry takes place in water, which can act as either an acid or a base accepting deposits and enabling withdrawals like a 24-hour molecular ATM. And when a proton deposit customer, that's an acid, and a proton withdrawal customer, the base, shop at the same time, their net effects on water's account may cancel out, and we call this neutralization. Now, certain molecules can behave as acids or bases without water, but that's another story. Let's end by saluting water as the resilient and fair banker for acids and bases. It's always open for business, doesn't charge interest, and will never foreclose on your molecules. Which is more than I can say for
many of them show you that you got right in. Water play in acids and bases. Think about it. What role does water play in acids and bases? It's a word that starts with an N. Neutralization. Think about that word and what that means. Neutralizes them. Good. Water makes all acids and bases neutral. Good, y'all keep it. Give you one more minute. Go ahead and share with your table partner. Europe. 
For many years, these stations had been using tall chimneys to disperse the sulfur dioxide far away, thinking that dilution was the solution to pollution. However, the acid did not get diluted, but instead was carried in the wind to Scandinavia, where it fell into Swedish lakes. Originally, people tried to neutralize the acidity by adding limestone to the lakes. This was partly successful. For example, salmon returned to some polluted rivers in Wales after the acidified lakes from which the rivers flowed were treated with lime over a number of years. A much better method is to trap the acid before it reaches the atmosphere in a process called scrubbing. The kind of scrubber we need in this case is an alkali to react with the sulfur dioxide. So either seawater, which contains a little bit of sodium carbonate, or lime, calcium oxide, is used. Can you think what reaction will occur with calcium oxide, a basic oxide, and sulfur dioxide, a acidic oxide? What do y'all think is going to happen with uh, a basic oxide and an acidic one when they come together? If something's basic and something else is acidic, it can become neutral. Maybe. Calcium oxide plus Sulfur dioxide makes calcium sulfite, that's CaSO3. The sulfite can be reacted with oxygen to make gypsum, calcium sulfate, CaSO4, which is the main ingredient of wall plaster. These scrubbers have greatly reduced our sulfur emissions and given many countries much cleaner air, but it does reduce the efficiency of the power station, maybe by as much as 10% thus increasing the cost of the electricity. All right, I think you could go ahead and skip forward. Go on ahead and answer that question. What is the problem of acid rain, and how do you think it could be solved? go into rivers and lakes and damage the water animals environment. I believe it can be solved by treating the air and checking the pH of lakes often. That's good. It affects trees, freshwater and soils, destroys insects and aquatic life forms, causing paint to peel. That's a good Google one. a lot of things. All right, I'll give y'all one more minute to finish up.
right, let's evaluate what we learned. Go ahead and answer these four questions. 